Welcome to the Happy Black Woman Podcast, where we're on a mission to empower women to transform their lives through personal development and entrepreneurship. We bring you all the information, inspiration, and motivation you need to create a life of happiness, success, and freedom. Now, please welcome your host, the happy black woman herself, Rosetta Thurman. Hello, ladies, and welcome back to the Happy Black Woman podcast. I told you that I had some juicy interviews and conversations coming up, and this one is part of my promise to you. We have today with us on the show, Sharkika Miller McIntyre. She is the founder of Divas Doing Real Estate. And I have not had anyone come on the show and talk about this topic before. So I'm excited and I hope you are too. Welcome, Sharkika. Thank you, Rosetta. I am glad to be with you in the Happy Black Woman community. Yes, I know that I wanted to operate this interview as if, you know, we're all like sitting around just kind of asking you questions about how we can all be a diva doing real estate because it's a topic of interest for me as well. And I'm like a baby learning about this stuff for the first time. So I uh, wanted to let you guys know how I know Shakika because I've been bringing on a lot of different guests on the show and I want you guys to know what's my connection to them. So Shakika has been a part of our Happy Black Woman tribe for a while now, I think about a year or two. And she is in our Happy Black Woman Mastermind program, one of my programs to help women build their businesses. And one of the things that I love about her is just the fact that she is so willing to help women who would like to create wealth through real estate. And so I'm excited to have this conversation. And for those who have not met Sharkika yet, could you tell everyone a little bit about what you do? Yes, ma'am. I am by profession. I am a realtor and a property manager here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And our focus is property management. I help investors as well as first time home buyers and also up leveling buyers purchase new properties. And I'm excited about our venture divas doing real estate consulting, where I get to spend more time focusing on the needs of individuals that have concerns, doubts, fears about real estate and how they would move forward with achieving their real estate goals. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of women who have doubts and fears about, you know, real estate. We have heard growing up and coming into adulthood that having real estate is important, but it just sounds so big and so complicated to so many of us, especially when we have debt. And so a lot of people don't you know, think that they can do this with debt. So I want to talk about that a little later, but I'd love to hear more of your story. How did you get into this kind of work? Rosetta, I started the home buyer process literally 17 years ago. So I was 25 years old. I was in corporate America and literally within about a month of meeting a young lady, she invited me to a home buyer workshop. For me, that was different. It was odd. You know, it wasn't the normal invite that you would expect Mm. from a peer. And I decided to go. And I went to the first meeting in August. And by December, I had purchased my first property. Wow. Wait a minute. (laughs) You went to a workshop. A few months later, you bought your first house. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale, like to give everybody an idea, because it sounds like, wow, can you really do that? Give people an idea of where you were. Were you thinking of like, were you already thinking of buying a house or what was your journey at that time? I actually, my first experience with purchasing a house, I was living in a house, I was renting a house and it was a friend of my mother's and the house was maybe $60,000. So that was a few years prior. And I called a realtor, just blindly called a realtor, didn't know anything about real estate. And within a few days, I reached back out to her. And what she said to me was, you do not qualify. Mm. And so that put this just, you know, dawn dawning on me that that was just something that was not meant for me. Mm. So it was odd that once I graduated from college, again, I just started my new corporate position that this young lady would invite me to a home buyer workshop. When I went, I had no idea that I would be positioned to purchase. I was not thinking about purchasing. But after going to the workshop and fully understanding the benefits of becoming a home buyer, understanding what the path looked like for me and really getting a 
really a desire in my heart to have more. I was already leasing an apartment, paying a pretty good penny for an apartment even back then. And so when the numbers came, it all made sense to me. And because the person I was working with gave me such a clear pathway, meaning literally X, 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 check this, check this, do this, do that. I just felt like it was something that I could achieve if I followed that path. So first, again, first workshop was in August. I had a second appointment in September to put paperwork together. Now that was different. I actually remember calling my father saying, dad, are they trying to take my firstborn child with all this documentation? And he pressed me through it and said, you know, get it to them, do what you need to do. This is just a part of the process. Mm -hmm. And again, another meeting in October, found my house within the next 30 days and got an an offer accepted on Thanksgiving evening of that same year and closed a month later. So it was very, it was, I'm saying it was easy. It wasn't necessarily everything that I needed to do that was easy, but the process was made Mm, easy for mm me. And so from there, it really just inspired me to have more and do more as it related to real estate. Mm -hmm. So after that, were you kind of like into it? You ended up buying more properties? Like, Like what happened after that? Did you end up buying more properties? And then how did you end up like saying, oh, I want to help people do this too? The hilarious part of all of this, as far as the investment side, is literally I was in a mall walking out of Victoria's Secrets and I saw this sign that said, do you want to invest in real estate? Again, I had not thought about it. It wasn't something that I was looking to do, but I was curious about the experience. So I went home, told my husband about it. He said, sure, well, you know, make the phone call. Let's have a conversation with the individual that was hosting that particular workshop went there. And again, I had someone to give me a clear pathway on what it would look like to start the investment portfolio that we were looking to do based on numbers, based on where I stood from a financial standpoint, credit standpoint. It made perfect sense to me. And so from that point, my husband and I began to purchase properties. And what the blessing in all of this is that when we began to invest in properties, we were actually We started with the concept that we would help individuals that were barely there. So our goal was to purchase houses for individuals that had already looked at brand new properties. We would come in, be their investor, purchase, and then resell to them. And that was our strategy early on. And they would buy back from us once they were qualified to purchase. And so from that point, we did that over several years. And when the market started to change, then is when we decided that we would keep the properties for rental income and have that residual income on a monthly basis. And so really that's that was my process. But both of those being made so simple and, and the process being laid out very black and white for us made it very easy for me to move forward with both the home buying process and the investment side. And that's something that we want to do or I strive to do um, with Diva's doing is making the pathway very clear for individuals. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Wow. What an incredible story just of you starting it for yourself and seeing the power of it and not just having a home for yourself and your family, but also having investment properties, which a lot of people hear about. But again, it can sound so complicated. So now this is what you do, you shared with us earlier, and you have a specific heart for helping women to get into this field. So what are some tips you can share with us that can help the women listening get into real estate? And I'm just going to be real. It's, you know, the Happy Black Woman podcast. And I know my audience and a lot of us, myself included, think that we have to have, you know, perfect credit and, you know, paid off all the debt before we will invest in real estate. And for many of us, that's like, we still you still got student loans. We still got all kinds of stuff. And it's like, do we have to wait? Like how, with even with debt, how can we start to begin this process of buying real estate? One of the first things I have my clients do is really just face the facts. And it's exactly what you just said. When we look and put together all of the things that would keep us from moving forward, it does become daunting and it seems insurmountable that we can't get over the student loan. We can't get over the medical bills. We can't get over, you know, a past late payment for whatever reason. And the goal is really just to face those facts, to look at them and write them down and see that each one of those items that you may find as a hindrance actually has a clear pathway to get around it. And that's my job to help individuals get around any of those hurdles. 
It can be very stressful when you look at everything on paper, but unless you sit down and actually do those things, you won't have the opportunity to overcome those. One of the things that I hear often, like you said, is just that overload of debt. Well, if you're not working diligently to decrease that debt, then of course you're never going to get to that point. And most of us will not do that because it seems like it's so much, it's just too much to do. Not realizing that with discipline, with budgeting, with creating additional income to help you reduce debt, there are ways to get out of debt that are the things that you do every day. It's just that you're not thinking about it. You're not strategizing. You're not focused on those things. And so it's really my job to help you face the facts, figure out your pathway, what works for you, which is not the same for every individual. Everybody's debt is different. Everybody's issues are different. Everybody's incomes are different. But everybody can have a pathway to whatever real estate goal they have, whether it's buying their first house, whether it's creating an investment portfolio. It's possible, but you can't do that until you look at everything black and white. Um, And unfortunately, most of the clients that come to me haven't looked at their credit within a year. And I, I, you know, I am a proponent that you need to be monitoring your credit every 30 days. But I have individuals that never look at it because they're more concerned about what's on it than they are with moving forward and clearing those things up. So that's my first tip is to face the facts. Mm -hmm. I love that one. And there have been several times in my life when I was that person. I don't want to look at it. I know what it says. It ain't nothing good, right? I don't want to look at it. But I like what you said about, I think there comes a time in our lives where we say, okay, I have this goal. I'm not getting any younger. You know, I want to create this wealth for myself. Maybe I want to stop renting. I want to buy a house. And so there are a lot of women listening that are like, okay, I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm committed to doing what I need to do. So yeah, okay, I'm going to look at the credit. I'm going to look at what I need to do. Okay, now what? And after you look at your credit and you decide this is something that I want to do, whether you're at a 400 or 580 or 619, and I say 619 because most banks, you can get a loan with that with credit criteria at 620. You can do it with a little bit lower, but the criteria are different. But once you see where you are, It's all about discipline at that point. So if you're looking to change your score from 400 to 620, 720, 800, whatever your goal is, it's about discipline. It's about doing the things that are going to give you the maximum benefit in the increase of your credit score. So, for instance, if you have debt that you have just mismanaged in the past, the best thing is to create a new path for yourself, obtain new credit, new opportunities to show individuals that you are credit worthy. The other thing is taking care of the little mundane things that you've ignored, like a $10 bill that you just forgot about and it happened to pop on your credit. And I say happen um, loosely. Mm-hmm. But take care of those little things so that, again, someone that's willing to lend you money to purchase a property or to invest, they see that you're trying to make strides and recovering from the issues that you've had in the past. And you're just not negating those for whatever the reason. And again, most of my clients, when they come to me, they find that there are some things that one, they either didn't know about, two, they have ignored over a period of time. And three, they realize that if, in fact, they face the issues, build a disciplined budget, begin to save, begin to generate income purposely for debt reduction, that they're able to build their score. They're able to build savings. They're able to generate additional income for the purposes of down payments and the expenses of buying a property and eventually having the the goal, meeting the goal that they're trying to achieve in home ownership and investing. Yeah, Yeah, I love that. So, you know, the thing I love about you is that you make it sound so doable because you've worked with so many clients. I'm sure you've seen it all by now about, you know, someone being in a certain place and then being able to get the property that they want. So the credit and making sure all that is taken care of, that's, you know, a big piece of it. What about like, so, so the biggest question that that I think a lot of women may have. I'm just, again, pretending like we're all gathered around you and asking you questions, all the questions that we wanted to ask. And now we have someone on the show we can ask. Okay, so so what's the process like and how long would it take? So if someone needs to clean up their credit, typically how long would that take before they can like apply for to get their the home that they want? 
I tell individuals that everything is individualized. Mm -hmm. What would take you may not take someone else the same time. So someone literally can purchase a house in 30 days and someone else may have to wait three years. Mm -hmm. The issue is until you look at where you are, until you actually understand where you are from a credit standpoint, Mm -hmm. from a debt management income, you will never know how long it's going to take. Right good example of a lot of clients that come to me. I have a lot of self-employed individuals and their goal, really, they're making the income. Some of them have credit, they're credit worthy. So that's not an issue. Their issue often is tax returns, having tax returns that show that you make a profit every every year versus taking a loss for whatever the reason may be. And so for them, they need two good tax returns to show that their income is coming in. For most mm-hmm. banks, it's two. There are some banks that will accept just one. And so now we're in you know, August. If you're self-employed and you've already done your taxes for this year and you've taken a loss, you may not be able to revise those to, to make any changes. But the next time you'll have the opportunity may be early in 2018. And so with that being the case, your time frame may be, let's say, six months and you're only waiting to do tax returns because mm-hmm. everything else comes up. For someone else, if you have a judgment on your account and it's going to be five years before that judgment falls off and you need to pay it, it's really about how long is it going to take you to, to raise $1,500 to pay off a judgment on your credit account? Mm-hmm. For someone else, it may be a recent medical bill. For someone else, it could be just the time between the last late payment they've had and establishing new credit. So mm-hmm. everybody is different. Yeah. And that's why it's very important to find an accountability partner that can actually have a conversation with you that's not generalized. Right. And that's really about how you would best walk down your pathway to home ownership and or investing, um, what you do. Um, And sometimes Mm -hmm. it's hard, you're you're researching because nothing fits your criteria, your Mm -hmm. scenario. Mm -hmm. And so that too is why often people become discouraged because they're basing it on somebody else's experience. Right. Or they're reading something and it says, if you want to buy a house, you have to have X, Y, Z. And you're like, I ain't got that stuff. So maybe I'm not, (laughs) you know, a homeowner. Right. But there's, I love that you shared about the nuances in the process because knowing whether you're employed or self-employed like that, I don't know, a lot of women are going to be encouraged by that because if the only thing we have to do, your tax returns, like that's six months to a year, maybe, maybe two, but when you have that goal, it gives some direction. So instead of doing the same thing again for 2018, you can start to plan ahead and say, well, you know, I have to show that I actually, you know, had some profit. It's not about getting, not having to pay taxes. It's about getting my house next year. So there are different things to do. So I love, you know, that you are so clear on the nuances based on where your clients are. And especially with my audience, a lot of us are self-employed or just getting started or some people have money from their job and they also, you know, may want to use that income from their business as well. So that's really important to know. Correct. And one of the things that I find again is because it is so individualized, people do easily become discouraged when they begin to compare each other. So Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, you know, when you're in conversations, again, sitting around and someone tells you, oh, I just purchased my house and I purchased with zero down and I had a 490 credit score and XX and X or whatever that may be. Always look to someone, find a professional, hopefully call me so that I can walk you through what it looks like for you because everybody is going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest challenges for a lot of women in our tribe is asking for help. It's kind of like you want to you don't want people to know what's under, you know, what's you know in the closet with your credit and stuff like that. And you try to figure out on your own. And like you said, people do get discouraged not knowing that even with all the things we think are bad, because we tend to blow things out of proportion a lot as, as women, even with all the things that we think are bad, we can still get what we want. It may take a little longer, but asking for help is really the key to this whole process, it sounds like. Yes, yes. You definitely need someone that's knowledgeable, someone that you can trust and someone that's willing to stay in it for the long haul with you. And a part of Divas Doing Real Estate is really helping individuals broaden their thought process. Mm -hmm. So whether it's going to take you 30 days 
for two years. And I do have a client that I literally worked with for eight years and I always refer back to her. And I know that sounds odd, but it took her that time to get it. It took Mm -hmm. her that amount of time to say, you know what? I want this. This is something me and my family deserve. I work hard and I'm going to do it. And even though it took her that length of time, I was there with her the full step of the way. Mm. I definitely don't encourage people to take eight years. I wanted to click a little bit earlier, but you definitely need someone that's willing to stay with you, to talk to you and be there as a resource for you when you're ready. And it finally clicks. My goal yeah. is that it clicks in less than nine days. <laughs> Right, right. This is good stuff. I love it for the ladies listening. I hope that you're feeling a glimmer of hope, you know, that this can be for you. There's so many women that have their dream home on their vision board. And I've seen the pictures, you know, from you guys. So the takeaway that I'm getting already from this conversation is that your your goal may be closer than you think. Correct. And it is. And you'll never know until you take the first step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I know we'll share some resources that people can access later, but I want to dive a little more into your world. So you have a lot on your plate. You've got, you know, you've got your business, you're helping, you know, people with real estate, you're getting people into homes. And you also have a beautiful family that you have raised and you've got your husband, you guys have been together a long time. So I want to talk about, you know, for someone like you, who's walking in her purpose and doing the work that you've been called to do in this industry, how do you stay focused and productive and not neglect your family? One of the things that I think is the best for me in staying focused is really understanding my purpose. It's really understanding that everything that I'm doing currently is not about me. It is for my family. It is for the clients in which I serve. And so when I've accepted that, as I've accepted that, life literally has started to align again with that purpose. And so for me, just taking care of myself is very important. Mm -hmm. Always staying connected spiritually doing the things that I need to do to make sure that I'm healthy, eating right, going to the gym, spending quality time with my husband on vacations, making sure the children have their quality time. But then I also make sure I have my own personal time, whether it's spa time, which I love. Mm -hmm. Spa time is very important to me. Having time that I can just relax and unwind is very important to me. And really being able to connect with other people in the Happy Black Woman community has been awesome for me as well, because the thing things that I'm challenged with, I have individuals that I can go to to have conversations with and they get it. They understand my plight and what I'm going through. And so it's been very, it's been a very beautiful experience for me to share that with other people. But the goal is all about taking care of yourself and knowing when you've gone, you've done too much, Mm -hmm. stepping back and relaxing. Mm -hmm. I definitely get my playtime in and that's huge, but I definitely get that in through travel. We do a lot of traveling and that is really my time to kind of, you know, regroup, um, relax Mm -hmm. and just build on the next experience of what I'm trying to do next. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love that you incorporate your family in it because, you know, some people, women are are like, well, you know, when I'm successful, how am I going to live this life that I want and incorporate my family? And the way that you shared it it just seems like, well, that's what I want to do. So that's what I've done. And it just sounds like that's a part of your that's a part of your vision. Like it's all a part of your vision. It's not just become successful in real estate and work, work, work all the time. And we never get to enjoy it because I think that's the the worst part of all this is if you, why be wealthy through real estate and you can't enjoy your wealth? Correct. I um, actually came up, it's, I call it my five F's of my, my life. And that's really faith, family, freedom, fun, and finances. And one of the things that I focused on even before I became a real estate broker, it was about faith. It was about taking the leap to do something totally different outside of corporate America. I had to take faith in order to move forward to purchase my first property. I definitely had to have faith to do the investment thing because that was totally outside of my comfort zone and my husband's comfort zone. So we both had faith to do that and just trusting that things would work out the way they were intended to be. And so faith, my family, the freedom, as as you always talk about, Rosetta, is just being free to do the things that you want to do and incorporating everything around that and having fun. Everybody Everybody should be having fun. I don't think we're put on this planet to work 24 hours a day and not experience life. 
And then finances came from all of that. So most people or a lot of people see it, you know, the finances should be a little bit higher. But for me, because I have made it very clear on what my my focuses are in my life and my priorities, I found that the finances have have kind of flowed from that. So I definitely would recommend that any person listening to this podcast really just sit down and think about your priorities and where everything falls. And it all will align if you're you're moving forward in your purpose. It all will align. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and there's no need to lose ourselves because of the finances. Because I think, Correct. like you're saying earlier, it can seem stressful or big, and it's like, oh well, this is my number one priority. And then you look up, you know, six months later, and you haven't seen your friends or your family in a while, and your your marriage is suffering. So there's nothing worth sacrificing all the other areas. That's so correct. One of the things that I challenge women as they're moving into this realm, home ownership or investing or deciding they want to get into sales is always ask themselves, why? Why do you want this? Why is it important to you? And anytime someone says to me, I only want to purchase a house because I want to build equity to to do X, which is the finance part, or I only want to get into sales because I want to make money, or I only want to become an investor because I want to make residual income every month. If that's your number one why, that's fine. You recognize that. But then you also need to recognize if that's your number one why, that's generally what you will move towards or act on. And then that becomes happy. And so it's kind of hard to reverse that once you get in that flow of things. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. But that will become what you are chasing. Mm. That's the only reason or your number one reason. So it's always very important to find out that why. Yeah, that's such a good reminder because it can get lost especially with all the details. And it's like, there's some stuff, especially, you know, in business, I'm like, I thought I was just gonna help people, but there's all this other stuff involved. There's marketing, there's sales. And I'm like, oh, some days, you know, it was like, do I really want to do this? And it's always remembering my why, like, if you don't do this, what else are you going to do? Like, this is what you're, what you're meant to do. So having that why at the forefront can definitely help us overcome the challenges that are co- going to come, you know, whether it's raising your credit scores, you can get that house. You know, the reason why you want the house is important to remember. It's not just getting the house, but your kids can live in that house. Your grandkids can live in that house. You know, it's. And you said it, Rose, that are really, I like that. You said your grandchildren. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell people all the time, if you're not buying your own house, you either have purchased someone else's or you're currently buying someone else's. Mm. So whether you do it for yourself or not, you are purchasing a a house. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, people don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, I'm renting a property, but they're not realizing that by them renting a property or living in a space that they're actually doing the same things that you desire for yourself, you're helping someone else do it for their families. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I am a huge proponent of home ownership. No, it's not right for everybody, but for those that desire it, it's possible. I'm a huge proponent of investing because I also believe that we should be building legacies for our families and for ourselves, especially women and especially women of color. The time is now to do that. And if we don't recognize that, then we are also placing our children in the same cycle that they're not going to recognize that. And that is why many of us do not have generational wealth is because no one stepped out and said, I'm just going to do it. You know, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to get it done. Not for me, but for my children's children's children. And so that is my goal through Divas doing real estate consulting is really to help women broaden that thought process. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Wow. I love the work that you're doing and I just love the ripple effect that it creates in the world. Some people might just see it, oh, you know, as a real estate broker and I'm a consultant, but really the impact that you can have on families, that's the part that I bet gives you chills sometimes. (laughs) It does. It really it really does, because you can see the light. You can see the light bulb go off when someone when it all clicks and it makes sense. And then when someone actually achieves their real estate goal, when they actually you know retain their keys or when they have the investment property, 
it's just a joy to see that they under, they get it. They understand why it's so important. And again, it's just not about the individual. It's about what they can do moving forward. And so once someone gets that, we understand that we're building not only ourselves, but we're building communities. And that's important, especially in, in you know today's society. Building communities is very important. And for our young people to have something to shoot for. Yeah, totally. So in your journey, I know that you have definitely exercised your faith and all of that and kept yourself inspired. So is there a book that you can recommend our tribe, real estate or or not, any kind of book that has really helped you in your journey thus far? Yes. One of the books that I love is When a Woman Lets Go of the Lies by Cheryl Barterton. Mm-hmm. I think it's very important for us to discover who we are and whose we are. And in doing so, we we act different. We see different. We believe different. We dream bigger. We have just a different perception of ourselves and the world around us when we understand how magnificent and wonderful we are and why we were created the way we were created. And so I definitely recommend any woman to pick that book up. I think it's a a beautiful book. It gives great details and it really was an eye opener for me on the things that impact me spiritually that I didn't even realize maybe why I was doing a certain thing or why I didn't do more so why I didn't do certain things, Mm. how that there's a spiritual effect to that. And so I definitely recommend that to the happy black woman community. Great. Actually, what's the name of the book again? It's when a woman lets go of the lies. Okay. That is the first recommendation we've had for that book on the show. So we'll definitely link that up in the show notes when you guys go to the website and look at the show notes for this episode. So thank you for that. And, you know, for all of my entrepreneurs who are listening, you've been through this, you've been through a lot in your experience, but for the woman who's listening and she's like, wow, you know, this is really inspiring. Shakika is doing great work. I want to do my own thing and make a difference in a similar way, but I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm good enough. Like what would be your number one piece of advice for that woman that wants to go out on her own and create something but she's just not sure if she's ready. One of the things that I would say to anyone that has a desire and a dream to do something on their own to become an entrepreneur is to just do it. Mm -hmm. Literally, just do it. Because if you do not, you will talk yourself out of, and there's a thousand reasons why you can say no to yourself, Mm. but just do it. Find someone that is willing to help you. Rosetta, of course, is the the queen here of helping individuals move towards their gifts and entrepreneurship. And there's always going to be a reason for you to say no. If you just make the first step and that's all you have to do, just say yes, just say yes to yourself and everything else will again align with what you're trying to do. And I know it sounds very simple. You know, it sounds like Nike just do it, but it is that simple. Once you take the first intentional step to move forward with building your business or doing whatever it is that you desire to do, then everything else will follow. But you got to just make that first step. And if you don't, 10 years will go by and you'll wish you would have made that first step. And so possibilities just open up when you are willing to open up. And so that would be my that would be my advice to anybody. If you hear doubts, it's because you are destined to do it. So move the doubts away and just just take the first step. Yeah, I love that advice about taking the first step because once you do that, the second step can open up and you're never alone on this journey. That's the thing that I've been reminded of over and over. It's not just me. You know, I've got God on my side. I've got the universe of people who were placed in my life to help, you know, so whatever you want to do, there's somebody out there who will be brought into your life to help you, but they can't come into your life if you don't take those first steps. Correct. Yes. I think that's super, just super important for lack of a better word. And it seems again, so easy, Um, but I've recognized, especially over the last year, that that first step is all all I needed. That's Mm -hmm. it, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And just don't look back and keep walking. Yeah, totally. Wow, this has been such an inspiring conversation about a topic that many of us 
do not have a lot of expertise on. So thank you for sharing what you've shared here today. And for those of us who want to go deeper and learn more and really get more into the nitty gritty of becoming a diva doing real estate, how can we get in contact with you? Divas doing real estate.com is the best way to get in touch with me. However, I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I do welcome all of you to schedule a dream session with me. That is a complimentary session where I get to hear about your real estate dreams and let you know how Divas doing real estate consulting can partner with you in order to help you achieve those real estate goals. So again, Divas doing real estate.com. Awesome. So Shakika is making such a generous offer to all of you listening to schedule a dream session, a complimentary dream session with Shakika by going to divasdreamrealestate.com. And it is a confidential conversation where you can talk with her about you know, what it would look like for you to work with her and to have someone in your corner that can support you in your dream to be a homeowner or a real estate investor. So thank you for that offer, Shakika. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, ladies. Well, that is a wrap. We have had such an amazing conversation with Shakika and thank her so much for being here and sharing her wisdom and expertise. And she's not the only one who's been on the show sharing amazing information. We have several episodes that you can listen to. If you go to happyblackwoman.com, click on the podcast tab and you can listen to the archives, binge listen this weekend and really catch up on all of the shows we've had so far all for free. Until next time, ladies, have a beautiful day. Bye-bye and talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on the Happy Black Woman podcast. If you want all the show's notes from today's episode, go to happyblackwomanpodcast.com. Plus, we'll send you a copy of Rosetta's free life mapping workbook. We look forward to empowering you next time. And until then, do something this week that makes you happy.